Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy. I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or ingredients or formulations, something you may have heard about or read about or anything we're talking about here today on the program, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844 236 6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or if you'd like to join the Bright Side Ben team and join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, you can head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee right off the websites. If you're an entrepreneur or if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you like making your own hours and enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can become a longevity distributor, make some money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and or get your products at the wholesale price. You can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with Retinol 5%, the highest amount of retinol you're going to find anywhere. I, did, I formulated it to be equipotent, to have the same, same potency as Retin-A 0.05%, which is the standard prescription product used for treating acne or anti-aging. Retinol 5% Gel gives you the exact same retinoic acid potency with vitamin C. You're not going to find that anywhere, folks. You're not, certainly not going to find it in the Retin-A product that you get by prescription. It is a far superior product, not just because it's made with vitamin C, that alone makes it a superior product. But remember, in all my truth treatment formulations, you will find no water, silicon, oil, vegetable, uh, oil, silicon, water, wax, emulsifier, surfactant, preservative, fragrance, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products, truth serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream, and truth retinol 5% gel. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about excitotoxins and the relationship of excitotoxic symptoms, which include pretty much all mental health issues, depression, OCD, ADD, psychotic breaks, schizophrenia, pretty much anything that's a mental health issue can be related to excitotoxicity. And we were talking yesterday about how excitotoxins and excitotoxicities can be related to what we call leaky brain syndrome. You've all heard of leaky gut syndrome, at least if you've been listening to this program, you've heard of leaky gut syndrome. But 
what we don't talk about a lot is leaky brain syndrome, which is basically the same damage that, or the result of the same kind of damage that food components can cause in the intestine, or the intestinal blood barrier, the intestine being a wall between food inside the intestine and the blood on the outside of the intestine. Leaky, uh, leaky, uh, uh, leaky gut syndrome, or also known as intestinal permeability syndrome, is a whole bunch of health challenges. Pretty much any health challenge you can name that's related to leakage of particles through the intestinal wall into the blood. Breakdowns in the intestine cause the entrance of food additives and food components, undigested food components into the blood. This initiates an immune reaction in the blood. Ultimately, complexes float around in the blood called circulating immune complexes, which can come to rest in various organs and various glands of the body. And there's your, uh, this is the basis of immune and autoimmune diseases. Your doctor doesn't know this. Unless he's really, really sophisticated in the ways of biochemistry, and very few of them are, your doctor's not going to tell you that circulating immune complexes are behind autoimmune diseases and leaky gut syndrome syndrome is behind circulating immune complexes, for the most part or in large part. What your doctor also doesn't know probably, and what most people don't know, is that you can also have leaky brain syndrome, which is like leaky gut syndrome in the brain. And this leaky brain syndrome can increase the entrance or, or uh, uh, amplify or, or enhance the entrance of food additives, of excitotoxins like glutamates and aspartates into the brain, and this can lead to all kinds of symptoms of excitotoxicity. Now, you don't have to have leaky brain syndrome in order to suffer from excitotoxic symptomology, but leaky brain syndrome will enhance the entrance of these excitotoxins into the brain. And while gluten gets all the press, and for sure gluten is a problem for many people, if not most people, going gluten-free doesn't always help. Onions and garlic and broccoli, they don't have gluten in them. Artichokes don't have gluten. Bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, corn, rice, oats. These are all technically gluten-free, but that doesn't mean that they're non-reactive because you can have reactions, leaky brain reactions or leaky gut reactions to all kinds of components and foods. Gluten is one of a family of compounds called lectins and you can have, you can have reactions to other lectins. You can have lectin intolerance issues because that's really what gluten intolerance is. It's lectin intolerance, gluten just being one type of lectin. You can have lectin intolerance issues to non-gluten foods like beans and dairy and all kinds of vegetation. Corn and oats, supposedly gluten-free, are particularly problematic. Quinoa can be problematic. Peanuts and cashews can be problematic. All tree nuts can be problematic. Soy products can be problematic. So, uh, nightshades can be problematic. Potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, paprika, cayenne, peppers. That includes cherry peppers, pimentos. This is why doing a food diary and keeping track of the connection between foods and symptomology especially digestive symptoms, skin symptoms, and mental health symptoms is so, so important. Write down what you eat and then write down how you feel from a digestive perspective or how your skin looks or how your skin is doing, especially if you have psoriasis or eczema or rosacea and mental health symptoms. This is so simple, you guys. This relationship between food and disease represents our power to heal ourselves without doctors. And I'm not Mr. Food Nutrition Guy. I don't want to be Mr. Food Guy. I eat crappy sometimes too. I'm just saying if you have rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis or a mental health issue, this represents your power. This represents your freedom from the medical model. This represents your freedom from drugs which do nothing and can do nothing. Nothing in the medical model's armamentum, armamentarium, formulary, bag of tricks can do anything anything to reverse chronic degenerative diseases. They can possibly reverse symptoms. I keep seeing these commercials for Zelljans and other drugs, Umira, and uh, all, uh, I don't even remember all the names, these biologic drugs they call them, where they target the immune system. This is how these, the latest high-tech drugs that cost you thousands, tens of thousands of dollars a year work. They shoot missiles at the immune system. They kill the cells of the immune system to suppress symptoms. But that doesn't get us better. That just suppresses the symptoms. If you really want to get better, you got to figure out how to calm the immune system down. And it starts with the intestine and food and digestion. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. We are 
are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844 236 6010 is our number. I'm going to turn my phone off here. Sorry about that. 844 236 6010 is our number. That's 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. If you have comments or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also uh, purchase Longevity products and, and sign up and join the Bright Side Ben team by calling our phone team at 866-735-2470. That is 866-735-2470. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number here on the bright side, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment, We're talking about excitotoxins and gluten and food. I, I love this idea that we have so much control over our health challenges by food and by, di by uh, uh, paying attention to food and by paying attention to digestion and paying attention to our digestive tracts and, and uh, the health of the microbiome, the health of our intestine. This is so powerful, and it's not to be under, understated if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease, if you're dealing with a health challenge of any kind. And it's not just gluten-free. And this is simplistic. This idea of just going gluten-free and following a, a list of good foods and bad foods is just simplistic and naive. And while it may be helpful to go gluten-free for a lot of folks, and while it may be helpful to follow lists of good foods and bad foods, if you're still dealing with symptomology, there's a lot more to it because you could have reactions to onions and garlic and lots of other things that are supposedly good foods. This is why doing a food diary is so important, and this is why keeping track of the connection, the relationship between foods and your symptomology is so important. If you are symptomatic, and especially if you have digestive issues, Unfortunately, a lot of times we don't know we have digestive issues because we don't really compare our digestive symptomology with anybody. So we'll think we're, we're regular and we're not constipated, but we don't really know. Or we think that our, we don't have digestive problems because everybody has a little gas or everybody has a little heartburn. So we don't really, a lot of times people will tell me, and, oh, I have no digestive problems at all. Now, I'm not beating anybody up here. That's not what this is about. This is about our power. This is about taking our power back from a medical model that will tell you, oh, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about nutritional supplements. Don't worry about your digestive system. We got drugs for this. We got drugs for that. Or we can take out your gallbladder anytime, or we can hack out a little piece of your intestine. You won't even miss it. That's the way the medical model thinks. Does that, does that make us better? Does that make us healthier? Does that make us stronger? No. And even if the commercial tells you that your psoriasis symptoms will completely be gone when you use their Zelgans or their biologic drugs, which shoot and destroy the immune system, that's how they work. They're high-tech steroids, basically, at least in terms of their effect. The fact of the matter is, even if you don't have your psoriasis symptoms, you're still breaking down and you're still running higher risks for cancer and heart disease and other awful, awful breakdowns that can happen in the body and a shorter life as well, even if you're suppressing the immune system with your drugs. So if you're some, uh, symptomatic, especially if you have digestive health issues, but really any health challenges, rheumatoid arthritis, other autoimmune diseases, connective tissue diseases, interstitial cystitis, which is a, a long-term chronic bladder infection. Can you imagine this? People who have IC, interstitial cystitis, have a bladder infection that never goes away. That means every minute of every day they feel like they need to go to the bathroom. Every minute of every day, when they or every time they urinate, I should say, they have a burning sensation that never goes away, that doesn't go away with antibiotics. And it's a classic sign of digestive system breakdown, inter, uh, 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 intestinal permeability issues, rosacea, psoriasis, eczema, acne, you name it, mental health issues. If you have any symptoms and you're gluten-free, you say, oh, well, I eliminated all gluten, but I still have my psoriasis. You could very well be dealing with some kind of lectin attack that is non-gluten related. And this is the fallacy of good food, bad food lists, as well as the meme or the cliche or the fad of gluten-free. This is why gluten-free gets such bad press. It be has become a fad. It's become a fashion. That's why people roll their eyes when people say they're gluten-free, because it's, it's become a cliche. Not that it's not important, it's just that there's more to it than that. And this is why I always recommend fasting and then a food diary and then elimination, an elimination diet. 
The term lectin, by the way, describes a special kind of plant protein, technically a glycoprotein, which is a protein sugar complex that reacts with molecules on cells, that reacts with animal cells and human cells, and it causes these cells to clump up and initiates an inflammatory and immune response. This is how gluten works. Gluten particularly attacks the lining of the, of the intestine, as most of you guys know. I'm not beating up on gluten, by the way, or gluten, I, a gluten intolerance or the notion of gluten intolerance, because many, if not most people, are gluten intolerant. I'm just saying it's more to it than that. You get these reactions between human cells and animal cells in your lectin or gluten, and this can happen on the intestinal lining. It leads to leaky gut, and then once the gut becomes leaky, once the intestinal lining becomes leaky, particles get into the bloodstream. This initiates an immune response in the blood, an immune response and an inflammatory response that occurs in the blood leads to clotting, leads to coagulation. And this is one of the major reasons, this leaky gut phenomena is one of the major reasons why blood clotting and blood coagulation issues are so big. It's such a major problem. It's why warfarin and other blood thinning drugs are best selling drugs. Or at least one of the major reasons, because stuff is getting into the blood inappropriately, this causes the blood to clot. It also causes the accumulation of these CICs, these circulating immune complexes, which come to rest in various glands in the body. That's where we get our autoimmune diseases. That's where we get brain health issues via the, the connection between leaky gut and leaky brain. It's where we get skin problems. Pretty much anything you can name that's a health challenge is possibly related or even likely related to glycoproteins, lectins, gluten, and other food components that enter into the bloodstream. And by the way, it's also the sugars. Yesterday we started talking about FODMAPs. You may, may or may not have heard of FODMAPs. If you're dealing with a health challenge, you should look it up, F-O-D-M-A-P-S, FODMAPs. It's, uh, it's achieving cult status now, not quite as significant a, cult, uh, a level of cult status as gluten intolerance, but it's approaching it. FODMAPs stands for fermentable, that's the F, oligosaccharides, O, disaccharides, D, monosaccharides, M, and polyols, FODMAPs. These are all various types of sugars. And it's, when I say sugar, I'm not just talking about the glucose and the fructose that we always beat up on that causes the second point on the triangle of disease, blood sugar problems. Those are definitely problematic, but it's more to it than that. Other sugars, which are kind of energy sugars, fermentable sugars is what they're called. Fermentable means bacteria act upon them. These fermentable sugars are found in all kinds of fruits and vegetables, and it doesn't matter if they're organic. You could be eating only organic salads all day long and you could still be reacting in a FODMAP sort of way. FODMAPs, uh, FODMAPs fructo, uh, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. Don't worry about all those big fancy schmancy names that basically means fermentable sugars, fermentable carbohydrates. Fermentable meaning bacteria act upon them, and they uh, proliferate, and they release gases, and they can cause all kinds of distress. If you want to see if you've got a FODMAPs problem, go get yourself some figs or some dates or some raisins. Dried fruits are especially high in these FODMAP sugars. And eat a bunch of dates or eat a bunch of these dried fruits, dried apricots, and see what happens. If you get bloated, you get gassy, you get diarrhea, crampy, constipation, anything in your digestive system from eating those kinds of foods, you got a FODMAPs problem. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. We've got a search engine up there, and that's a compilation of all my websites at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, uh, you can uh, check out our archive page at brightsideben.com. We've got search engines up there as well. If you miss a program or want to review a program or direct one of your friends, family members, loved ones, clients to a program about specific topics, you can search at brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. 
Also, you can purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got videos and, and uh, news stories and blog posts up at all those all, all our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you can also join, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites or purchase Longevity products off the websites as well. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also want to give a plug to my shopping uh, shopping site, shopping site, shopping site website, I guess you'd say, brightsidehealth.com. We've got, uh, we've got our bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com, our pure hemp botanical products up there, as well as enzyme products and uh, coconut powder. I'm always looking for good products to post up at brightsidehealth.com. And then, of course, you can check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, our number today, 844-236-6010, and we will get your calls here in just a moment, so hang tight. We do have lines open at 844-236-6010. From the, this is from the journal Cellular and Molecular Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Hepatology meaning liver health. Unsaturated fat associated with fatty liver disease. Unsaturated fats are liquid fats. These are the fats that a lot of nutritionists, Doc Wallach, and a lot of other folks beat up upon, and for good reason. Unsaturated fats are liquid fats or vegetable oils, as they're called, used to be considered super healthy. I remember when I was growing up, everybody was all obsessed with unsaturated fats and how good corn oil was and good soy oil was. Nonetheless, as it turns out, unsaturated fats are a big, big problem, excess ingestion of them, that is. According to this article, uh, unsaturated fat is now linked to fatty liver disease. According to Caroline Duarte, PhD of the University of the Department of Medicine at the University of Colorado at San Francisco, quote, although purported to have many health benefits, including a favorable lipid profile, too much unsaturated fat can have significant adverse effects on metabolism. You know what? You're best off staying away from these fats with the exception of in small amounts. Now, if you are going to use oils, vegetable oils, and there are some benefits. Let's be clear here. It's, they're not just, you can't just beat up on these vegetable oils because the real problem isn't the vegetable oils as much as it's the rancid vegetable oils or the unstable vegetable oils or the heated vegetable oils or the processed vegetable oils. Nonetheless, you want to be a little bit careful with these things. Uh, if you're dealing with any kind of fatty liver problems, if you're dealing with any kind of uh, 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 fat or lipid profile problems, uh, excessive triglycerides in the blood and such, you want to be somewhat respectful of these, uh, of these vegetable oils, these unsaturated vegetable oils. However, you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, and there are some good things that you'll find in vegetable oils, and they're particularly helpful when you're adding them to vegetables and salads. That's really where, in my opinion, this is where vegetable oils, if they're fresh and if they're kept in a dark, a dark uh, bottle and if they're kept in the refrigerator, this is where they can have some health benefits because they will help pull out the nutrition out of veg vegetables. Many of us are not processing our vegetables correctly. That's because nutrients tend to be locked up in vegetation. In fact, the polyphenols and the other nutrients that we've spent a lot of time talking about and will continue talking about are only, low, are only found in vegetables in very, very, very tiny amounts, about uh, something like uh, at least on the order of 0.1% or 0.01% of your lettuce and your tomatoes and your, and your uh, uh, pear, uh, vegetation, whatever kind of uh, vegetables you're eating, your broccoli and your Brussels sprouts. Only a very small amount is going to be active medicine. And that means if you're not processing your vegetables, if you, if you have problems with fat absorption because many of these nutrients are fats, you may not get the benefit. But if you add a little bit of oil to your salad, or if you cook your, uh, or steam your, your vegetables with a little bit of butter, you'll be able to pull those nutrients out of the vegetation and it will allow you to get more, more power, more medicinal power, more therapeutic power out of your produce, out of, your, out of the vegetables you're eating. Same is true if you put a little bit of oil on top of your salad. By the way, putting a little oil on your salad with spices makes your salad super duper delicious. That's one of the things that oils do is they make foods more delicious. So it's not that cut and dry. Yes, it's a problem too much unsaturated fats, too much vegetable fats, but it's not that cut and dry that you just want to avoid them. In my opinion, just my opinion, and everybody has their own opinions, uh, it doesn't necessarily follow that you want to avoid them entirely. Okay, from uh, the journal Obesity Reviews, food cravings down with extended calorie restriction. Extended calorie restriction is associated with a reduction in food cravings. And I've noticed this myself. If I fast or if I spend a couple days eating very, very little food, I don't crave things as much. 
So if you're going through food cravings, cravings for sugar or cravings for flavors or cravings for fat or oils, when you start to go through calorie restriction, that is limiting the amount of, uh, amount of food that you eat, basically, limiting your caloric intake, you will notice you don't crave foods as much. The opposite is also true. When you eat a lot of calories, your cravings go up. It could very well be that food cravings are the result of eating itself, or at least excessive eating. Once again, demonstrating how important it is to A, pay attention to what you eat, eating nutritionally dense, and B, restricting your calories. Along with fasting, I can think of no more fundamentally important health strategy fasting and caloric, than fasting and caloric restriction. And of course, using a nutritional supplement program is one of the best ways to get into a caloric, uh, using nutritional supplements is one of the best ways to get into a caloric restriction program because you'll find that you want less food the more nutrients, the more raw nutrition you're putting into your system. All right, one more here and then we'll get your phone calls at 844-236-6010. This is from Penn State College of Medicine. Statins may not be used for protection against Parkinson's disease. Even more importantly, quote, use of statins may speed up the onset of Parkinson's disease symptoms in people who are susceptible to the disease. That's according to Penn State College of Medicine researchers published in the journal Movement Disorders. You guys, you cannot get healthier by taking a drug and this idiocy absolute lunacy of using statin drugs for cardiovascular disease is behind new, uh, it will sh be shown to be, uh, be behind health challenges inevitably because cholesterol is a critically important element in the body. There are few, if any, biomolecules, molecular uh, uh, bio, biochemicals in the body that are more important than cholesterol, and it is going to be shown to be inevitable that disease follows long-term use of statins. I'm not talking about side effects. I'm talking about full-blown disease states because cholesterol is so important. It's a building molecule. It's an anabolic molecule. It's a healing molecule. It's responsible for the production of various other compounds. It is a type of vitamin D. You guys have all heard about how important vitamin D is. Vitamin D news comes out every day. Vitamin D is cholesterol. Taking a statin drug is like taking an anti-vitamin D drug. All your, uh, your steroid hormones, your sex hormones, your youth hormones, your, your, your stress management hormones are all versions of cholesterol. And statin drugs suppress their, their production as well as they pr uh, suppress the production of cholesterol. And oh, by the way, one of the most heart-friendly, cardiovascular-friendly nutrients of all, coenzyme Q10, is itself stimulated by the production of cholesterol. So when you take a statin drug, if you're going to take a statin drug, make sure you use some coenzyme Q10 every day as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Alaska and welcome our friend Elaine to the bright side. Hey, Elaine. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Ben. How's it going in Colorado? It's going beautiful. Beautiful uh, pre-summer day. 75, 80 degrees. Probably the same. Probably the same where you're at, right? Is that correct? Yeah, but now the sun's setting at like 12:30 at night. <laughs> Is that good or bad? I think it's a good thing. I you love it. You get more day, right? It might yeah. throw off your might throw off your sleep, though. Well, I I make a cave. I sleep in a cave. I I can't have the light, so. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So what's hey, going uh, on today? Yeah, I've got a uh, just a quick comment for um, you and your listeners, and then a question about a patient. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a book called Relearning to See. No, tell me about it. Oh, okay, yeah. The uh, the author's uh, last name is kind of a long, uh, different last name, Quackenbush, Thomas okay. Okay. R. Quackenbush, and it's a bit of a tome, uh, but it's called Relearning to See, Improve okay. Your Eyesight Naturally. Okay, and, sounds good. Uh, I, you know, I'm in my mid-40s, and starting to need the readers, because I couldn't thread needles, and I just couldn't do up-close work without it being blurry and, um, and the book's about 300 pages and it's a well well um, worth to read and so I started doing some of the concepts that he talks about. Are they exercises? Um, some of it's exercises but a lot of it is philosophy and a lot of it is kind of what you talk about and I think you'd really like it. How so? Uh, 
And then it was probably about four or six weeks, and I was doing some fine work, and I was like, I, I can't believe it. I don't need my readers. I don't need my Well, don't, don't keep us in suspense. What do you do? Like, give, me, give me a couple things. <laughs> Well, it's funny, you know, being a physical therapist, I, I said, well, I went to Chapter 18 because I said, well, what exercises do I do? And so in Chapter 18, he says, if you think this book is about exercise, go to Chapter 2. And it's, it's really a lot about philosophy. And one of the biggest things that helped me was um, the concept of blur, you know, where we kind of let our eyes, you know, space out and get blurry. Um, that's actually strain. And huh. that's it's a bad habit that I have. So that's one of the biggest things I corrected. But it does have neat exercises. Um, there's some nutrition in there. I think you'd enjoy reading. I, I will look it up. It's called Relearning to See. Relearning to See. Uh, Quackenbush. R. Quackenbush. Okay, good. I'll look, I'll look into that, and I'll give, you, I'll give you my take here after I look into okay. that. What's, so what's going yeah. on? Do you have any questions, or is that, was that yeah, what you want to say? Question, um, I have a patient, uh, very interesting. She got her knee replaced in February okay and she can only bend it to like 90 which is not enough you need more like 120 how old is she barely she? stares at 90 she goes back in to see the surgeon on, and they do manipulation under anesthesia oh the wow surgeon that's painful puts her up, cranks on the knee um, and like the best she after three weeks of that she could only get to 93 how old is she she is mid-60s. Um, I've seen her twice. Um, I got her up to 106. She's doing great. She's on BTT. Um, she's making, we've talked all about the diet. Um, so she's making great progress. You know, the knee's are very hot. I don't know if she's having allergic reaction that's, to that. Well, it could be inflammation because there's going to be, that's yeah. a serious, to the knee, that's a serious, serious surgical procedure. It might not be, the, well, it's still serious to the person. Here's the deal. With all replacements, knee replacement, shoulder replacement, hip replacement, whatever, you got to, number one, start rebuilding the connective tissue, and number two, you got to start working with anti-inflammatory strategies. Most important anti-inflammatory strategies are going to involve food and digestion once again. That's how we, inf that's one of the major ways we inflame as stuff gets into the bloodstream. So all the things we talk about for food, uh, for the digestive system, uh, as well as eliminating any problem foods, food diary, eliminating problem foods, or elimination diet, and then using uh, probiotics, good bacteria, digestive enzymes with all meals, and digestive enzymes on an empty stomach. As we've said, taking digestive enzymes on an empty stomach will help, uh, has, has anti-inflammatory uh, anti effects, and then uh, using digestive enzymes to help her process her foods, especially her proteins, is going to be important. Caloric restriction will help her. Make sure she's using enough essential fatty acids. They have anti-inflammatory properties, her ultimate EFAs, and then everything she needs to do to build connective tissue. Your glucogel caps, bones, soup is also very important. You can't build connective tissue without vitamin C, so making sure she gets enough vitamin C, and then also vitamin E for its anti-inflammatory properties. I'd be using high doses of vitamin E uh, if I were her, maybe 400 to 800, well, about 400 units a day, uh, international units a day of vitamin E. Of course, the Healthy Star Pack, that goes without saying, and she might want to start supplementing with bone broth protein after she does her, after the doctor does uh, her manipulation, and she should be doing, if she's not already, uh, some kind of exercise program to build the tissue around the joint that has been replaced. Uh, all right, I'm going to let you go, Elaine. I want to get to a couple more calls, okay? Hey, thanks thanks, so, thanks so much. God bless you. Take care. All right, let's go to uh, Kelly in Texas. Good morning, Kelly. How you doing? Hi, Ben. I'm good. Hey, hey what's up? Let me get you off speaker. Um, I had a couple of questions about your face product. Okay. I got your retinol gel and okay. also the healing cream, which I love the healing cream. Nice. And I, I, I use it all the time. Nice. So that's not just for healing. You could use it all the time, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, every morning I put it on my face, actually. Nice. But with the retinol, what um, my question is, is I got it, oh, early spring, the end of winter, I guess. Okay. And I've kept it in the refrigerator. And my thing is I used it once, and I really loved what my skin felt like the next okay. day. Okay. Um, but then another friend of mine, a couple of friends said, oh, but you don't want to be using that even if you wash it off and put on the healing cream and then you're out in the sun while you're no, using it. No, that's, that's not true? true. 
that's not true at all. What you don't want, you, it's not like there's some kind of magical reaction that happens between the, the retinol and the sun. What happens is the, sun, the retinol will stimulate your skin and the sun will stimulate your skin, so you'll end up with overstimulation. Does that make sense? It's yeah. not like there's some kind of weird yeah. chemistry reaction. It's just overstimulation, and you never want to overstimulate, just like you don't want to overtrain. And this is one of the biggest mistakes we make when we understand or we begin to understand how important stimulating the skin is. Sometimes we overstimulate. We say, oh, a little bit's okay, so a little bit's good, so a lot will be better. It doesn't work that way because your skin doesn't grow, your tissue doesn't grow, and that's what we're looking at here is growing collagen and growing tissue. Your tissue doesn't grow when you're stimulating it. It grows on the days off. Does that make sense? It grows when you're resting. And it's this combination of stimulation and rest that accounts for all growth, whether it's emotional growth, spiritual growth, physical growth, growth of your skin, the growth of your muscles. Resting is key, but that doesn't mean you only want to rest. The way to grow tissue is stimulating a little bit and then resting a lot. So what you want to do when you're using the retinol is you want to make sure you're leveraging the rest period and you're not overstimulating. And overstimulation can occur from using too much retinol, using, too fr using retinol too frequently, or if you're out in the sun and you're also using your retinol. How do you know you're going to have a problem? You will burn you will become more sensitive. If that occurs, back off from the sun or back off from the retinol or, or back off from both. But it, it, either way, you want to back off from the overstimulation. Stimulation is great. Overstimulation is not. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, and this is true about any stimulating topicals, including alpha hydroxy acids, including retinol, including peels that you may do at a salon or, or anything that you do at home. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, too. Um, uh, well, because on my, at my job, three days a week, I'm out in the sun in the mornings watering plants and all. Okay. And so I guess if I just mainly use it on the weekend... Just, that's perfect. Once a week is great. Once or twice a week is great. Some people use my retinol 5% gel three or four times a week, but once a week or twice a week is fine. Remember, it's the rest period where the tissue grows, so you want to take advantage of that rest period. You want to really leverage it and rest as much as you can without over-resting. Just like you don't want to overstimulate, you don't want to over-rest. So it's kind of a, you got to find a sweet spot of just enough uh, retinol and just enough rest, and that's going to be different for everybody, and it may be different for you at different times of the year or at different times for example your menstrual cycle if you're having a menstrual cycle some people notice that their skin is more sensitive towards the end of their menstrual cycle so they maybe want to back off you're going to have to that's why I created these products for savvy sense uh, savvy sophisticated women who and men who understand the skin who who, who are connected with their skin until these pro, until I developed these products you had to buy the same products that, that uh, somebody who didn't understand their skin had to buy this allows the savvy sophisticated woman or person who understands the skin or who is sensitive to how their skin is to have a product for them so they don't have to have a dumbed down product which is what most products are that you buy in the salon or the doctor's office or anywhere else hey Kelly we're out of time sweetheart thank you so much for your call appreciate it and I'm glad you're uh, enjoying our truth treatment products have an awesome wonderful beautiful day as I hope everybody does and thanks so much for listening to the bright side tomorrow we'll continue talking about the FODMAPS diet and we'll get to some strategies some nutritional strategies that you can use to prevent excitotoxicity all right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.